Chapter 21, the laws pertaining to compensation for missed prayers. Even though we have an obligation to pray three times a day, sometimes either we forget or for a legitimate reason we couldn't pray. How can we compensate for something, for a prayer we missed? As explained in chapter 18, a person who purposely delayed his prayers until after the time for prayer has passed can never compensate for his deeds. However, if he forgot to pray or was prevented from doing so by forces beyond his control, in Hebrew we call it oiness, he had no control, he may compensate by reciting the Shemona Esre a second time after completing the Shemona Esre for the following service. Let me explain. I was to pray in the afternoon service, but I got stuck in a place where it's impossible to pray, or I don't have the prayer book, or I didn't realize I didn't pray. Then we cannot compensate the entire prayer. All we can do is compensate the Amida prayer. The Amida prayer can be recited again after I recite the Amida of the evening service. The same applies to any other prayer. After I recite the prayer, the Amida prayer of that particular prayer, I can add another time to recite one more time the Amida prayer for the previous prayer that I missed. This is only for the Amida or for any other prayer? Only Amida. <laughs> only Amida. After completing Shemona of the following service, the same applies to a person who made an error in his prayer which requires him to repeat the Shemona and which he did not realize until the time for the service has passed. For example, on Rosh Chodesh, we're supposed to say Yale Biyavo. If I forgot to say Yale Biyavo, I didn't realize it's Rosh Chodesh until the next prayer came and I got to synagogue and everybody was signing Yale Biyavo and I realized what I've done, what I missed in the morning. What do I do? I recite a second time a Amida prayer to make up for the morning prayer. Also with Talumotor? Talumotor, usually if you did not say Talumotor, I don't think it requires you to repeat the prayer. Yeah, if, in, if you say Mashi Varuach in the summer, then it does. And that's when, if we need to repeat a prayer, we can do so. If we forgot to do it immediately, we can do so at the Amida, let's say, in the Mincha or Mairi, to repeat another Amida. In Baruch Alein. So I said, not, all, not, not always you have to repeat the Amida. He should first recite the prayer appropriate for the time he is praying, and then the prayer for which he is compensating is recited. For example, a person who did not recite in the, the morning service should recite the Shemona for the afternoon service when the time for the afternoon service arrives and then recite Tachnun immediately afterwards you should recite Ashrei and then recite the Shemona again to compensate for the morning service. I didn't understand what he's saying then. So recite Shemona for the and afternoon it's, service. It's he says it's the first does this apply only like to the next day? I just should, I should say that as far as I'm aware, only the Amida before Tachnun, you say the Amida one time for that particular prayer, and then you recite the Amida again for the for the for the previous prayer. And that's exactly what he doesn't say. Right, so, right. <clears throat> if a person did not recite the afternoon service. You should recite the evening service, wait only the amount of time it takes to walk four cubits, and then without hesitation recite Ashrei and recite another Shemona Ashrei to compensate for the afternoon service. Again, as far as I am aware, and I am fairly certain that that's the correct way, we are only repeating the Amida, not the Ashrei, not the other part of the prayers. If a person did not recite the evening service, then directly after reciting the Shmones of the morning service, you should recite Tachnun, then Ashrei, and then recite the Shmones a second time to compensate for the evening service that he missed. Afterward, you should recite the Psalm, Lam Natseach, and then Uvo Letzion, just as it is forbidden to eat before the morning service, it is forbidden to eat before reciting the Shmones, which compensate for the evening service. This is on the morning after? <laughs> 
That's we're talking about the morning after. And this applies only to the next day. I mean, two days later, three days later. No. <clears throat> Once you miss the prayer, or there is a prayer after the sight, and the next uh, uh, next service, next time for prayer came, and you prayed or you didn't, you cannot then go back and 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 make up for that prayer. Number two. You fortunately get cut off and limited. Think about this. Yeah, if I had to make up for everything. <laughs> a person did not recite Shmon Esre during the required time, even though he had the opportunity, because he thought that he would still have time to do so after he completed the activity with which he was involved. In the meantime, the time of prayer passed. Similarly, a person who was preoccupied with financial dealings so that he would not suffer a loss and for this reason did not pray during the proper time, even though it is forbidden to overlook the time for prayer because of financial loss or other mundane matters, such individuals are considered as having been prevented from praying by forces beyond their control and may compensate for the prayers they fail to recite. Because if someone intentionally missed a prayer, he cannot make up for it. So the question is, what is something beyond control? Let's say I forgot. Forgetting is a good excuse. What happens if I was busy saving money? I'm busy dealing in a contract or at court, fighting a, 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 fighting a, a, a litigation. In that case, this is considered forces beyond my control because financials in Jewish law are considered very important and a person needs to do whatever they take to protect themselves, their financial assets. Similarly, a person who was too intoxicated to be fit to pray is, there, is also considered as one prevented from praying by forces beyond his control. This applies even though he began to drink when it was forbidden to do so. After the time for prayer had already arrived, it is forbidden to get drunk if now it's time already to pray the afternoon service or the morning service. I should make the prayer and then go and get drunk. <laughs> but what happens if he did it? Even though it is inappropriate, it is considered beyond his control and he has the ability to make up for that prayer in the next prayer. <clears throat> Number three. One can compensate for a prayer that was not recited in its proper time, only in the service that follows. You hear, Rabbi? However, if one delays any longer, it is impossible to compensate. The only time you can compensate is the next service, not afterwards. For example, a person who failed to recite both the morning and afternoon service can compensate for the afternoon service in the evening service, which follow. However, he can no longer compensate for the morning service. Since two prayers, two prayer times, the morning and the afternoon prayer times have passed without his reciting it. So, <clears throat> therefore, uh, you cannot make up for it. In the notes, he, may, he says that there is a way to add, as, to add as a gift, as a prayer, as a gift. Number four, even on a day on which the Musaf service is recited, for example, Shabbat or holiday, if one failed to recite the morning service, one may compensate for it in the afternoon service, even though there was another Amida in the middle of the Musaf. Since the time for the Musaf service extends until night, it is, if necessary, it is not regarded as though the time for two services has passed. What he's explaining here, morning service has a time until around noon time. Most of service don't have a limitation. In an emergency situation, one can pray the most of service until the evening. Therefore, when Mincha comes and I realize I forgot the morning service, it's not considered a second prayer, it's considered the immediately next one because most of can still be recited even after Mincha. However, if the time for the morning service has passed and one has recited the most of service, if he already daven Musaf, he is not able to compensate for the morning service by reciting the Musaf again, since it mentions the Musaf sacrifices offered after the daily morning sacrifices. It is not an appropriate substitute for the morning service. If someone failed the morning service and he doesn't Musaf, by Musaf you cannot compensate for the morning service anymore, because Musaf is a totally different service. It's about special sacrifices brought on that special day on Shabbat or Shodesh holiday, etc. Why would somebody ever do Musaf? I'll explain. Nevertheless, 
if the time for the morning service has not passed, even though one has recited the Musaf service, one may recite the morning service. Let me explain. If I did, failed to dive in morning and Musaf, I was shikar and simchas Torah, and by the time I woke up, and it's not very, very far-fetched, <laughs> by the time I woke up, it's almost shkia, it's almost sunset. So I rushed away, I didn't realize I dive in mincha. I dive in the afternoon service. Now I realized I didn't make sure morning service and musaf service. And by the way, in 770, it happened all the time with Yeshua Bosch. So what do I do? Tell us the rabbi that the musaf service, the musaf prayer, is not considered an extra prayer to make mincha a sec number two prayer. And therefore, I can compensate for the morning service. I can then daven musaf. Musaf you can daven all day long. Wait, so, so you daven mincha. mincha. Now you can make up and say Shachlit Musaf? Yeah, that's exactly what I am saying. Exactly. Is the you go back and say the morning Amida and the Musaf? No, you don't say Yeah, you compensate for the Shachris by reciting Mincha again, the same Amida, which I don't know that we mentioned that. You don't say the morning service in the Mincha. You say the Mincha Amida the second time again, even though it's a little different prayer. And then you recite the Musa for me. Right. Now, what if I forgot Shachris and by Musaf time I wake up and realize? At that time you cannot recite a second Musaf mm -hmm. for the Shachris because it's a totally different prayer. That's what he's saying. You can't say Shachris after Musaf. You can't say the Musaf after Shachris after Musaf when you're not. If the time is first, you can't. If the time has passed, you no, cannot. No, I'm saying you, for, you forgot. Shacharit, and you have in Musa. And realize, my God, I forgot to say the for Shacharit. I, I don't think you can compensate, no. And that's what he's saying. I no. can't imagine how everybody daven Musa. See, if I come to Shacharit late, I come to Shacharit late, everybody's making Musa. So I make Musa with the company. Just a minute, I have to correct myself. Just nevertheless, Harry, nevertheless, if the time for the morning service is not passed, even though one has recited the Musaf service, he may recite the morning service. You can say the Shachris. You can. As long as it's not, the time for morning is not passed, which is a little after, after afternoon. Right. Now, if one, if one comes late to Shul and, and everybody's saying Musaf, it's uh, good that he says Musaf with them while they say No, right? no, no. You should, should say Shachris and say Musaf. Now, Ali, you ask, how is it possible? Can you ask to repeat the question? Yeah, I, I find it hard to understand how someone who decides, oh, I got to pray, and why he would ever pray Musa before doing chakras. Uh, there there are a million ways. I'll tell you myself, it happened. I'm the chazan, the only one who can daven. There's an exact ten men. You know how many times it happens here in Simchas Torah? that I get drunk or, uh, you know, the night before, and I want to get, get up, I get up, I have a little child who's going to help with service, comes Musaf. Musaf for holiday is very complicated. It's complicated, you know, there are parts you say, parts you meet. Before the new Sido, even with the new Sido, it's not so simple, but before the new Sido, it was very complicated. And now the only one can lead services. The only one can say every word is, is myself. By the way, it happens all the time. Uh, there, there are so many scenarios. It's unbelievable. Same is Musaf for Shchodesh. Imagine I come to synagogue, I'm late. I took my son to the airport. I come in, everybody's already having Shachis uh, Amida. I don't want to skip the morning service. I have to stop in. So my choice is to wait and then lead service for Musa because there's nobody else. Assuming, you know, all of you are not there, there are other people because I'm sure everybody can lead services for Musa. But it happens. Anyway, it is appropriate to say Shachris first and Musaf, but if someone recited Musaf, he can oh, then repeat Shachris. I should tell you there is other scenarios, and it happened here in the synagogue. Unfortunately, and I speak in this synagogue, you know how many times I forgot it was in a minion. I forgot it's Rosh Chodesh, and we have a regular service. Only in the afternoon, I talked to a friend, and he says to me, you know uh, something about Yalaviyov? I said, what Yalaviyov? I said, Sh -sh -sh it's Rosh Chodesh. I said to myself, the whole shul, nobody just realized it's Rosh Chodesh today. So now what do I do? I already have in Mincha. 
The Musaf, I can always recite. Shachris, I cannot. I didn't say Yalav Yove for Shachris. I have to repeat. If I already daven Mincha, I cannot compensate. You understand that? And it happened. It happened here in this shul with a minion, where I daven regular morning service, and after I daven Mincha, I I was in Miami once. I left for Miami. I forgot it's Rosh Chodesh, and nobody here thought of the idea of Rosh Chodesh. I go to Miami and I go to meet somebody and he says to me, I'm going to be a little late because it's Rosh Hodesh. I want to dive in with the minion. I already dive in Mincha. Now, Musaf, I didn't say, so I can say. Shachris, I cannot say because I already dive in Mincha. So you cannot compensate for Shachris on my reward. Well, while dive in Mincha, remember you didn't dive in Shachris, then at that time... You're allowed to make one more Amida for Shachris that you didn't say Yalav Yavoy. And then you say most. A lot of times, I know when I sometimes I go out on college campuses, I would download pen. On a Sunday, people will come for mincha and put on tefillin because they slept through. Because Jaffrey. they missed, yeah. yeah. So they, they put on tefillin for mincha. Okay, but they, they cannot have in shachis, then they just can say a second amida. Yeah, but they still put on tefillin. There is right, you can pull, put on tefillin until sunset. Okay. Tefillin is one mitzvah, prayer is a second. Today, we combine the two. At the Talmudic time, tefillin war was being worn all day long. You know that, right? Yes. So it has nothing to do with prayer. It's just that the only time our mind is supposed to be pure of evil, of negative thoughts, and it be in a clean place and concentrating about God is doing prayer. But the tefillin is not segregated to prayer. And even that is a joke, right? <laughs> I said maybe I'll get there someday. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. You know, it's funny. I see in Israel today the yeshiva boys who walk with filling all day long. Did you know that? And I think it's way, way crazy. I just saw a picture last week of two boys waiting in a bus stop next to women who are not dressed properly with the filling. I think they came from Alavaya, from a, of Rabbi Greinemann. There was a Rabbi Chaim Greinemann passed away, very famous rabbi. A little bit show up, and they came from Bnevak to the funeral. So after the funeral, they go back on a bus and they stay on the bus stop waiting, weren't filling, which to me is uh, worse, more than Yuhara. It's it's it's. I, I don't think it's wrong. Right. Can you work to fill into a Levaya? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Funeral. And then you repeat Shachris again. If you didn't say Musaf, then you say Musaf. Because Musaf is the time all day. No. It's over. Once you dive in Mincha, you cannot dive in Shachris. All you can do is make the Omida. Okay? This is uh, where are we? Um... All right, let's do one more. Number five. One can compensate only for Shmonesra. Here is what we just spoke about. One can compensate only for Shmonesra, which was not recited during the time of the, of the, uh, of the following uh, prayer service, but not during a time which is not a time for prayer. For example, a person who waited a long time after reciting the service, which he was obligated at the time, can no longer compensate for a service which he failed to recite. For example, a person failed to recite the morning service and later recited afternoon service in its proper time. After he waited an hour, he desired to compensate for the morning service which he had not omitted. This is not allowed even though the sun has not set yet and thus the time for the afternoon service has not passed. In other words, the making up for a previous prayer can be done immediately after you pray the current prayer. You cannot dive in Mincha, and now later somebody reminds you that you forgot the Alav Yom or Chachis in the morning, and now you can compensate. The rationale for this decision is that the sages decreed that compensation for a prayer, prayer one failed to recite is allowed only during the time one is reciting a prayer service which is then obligated, obligatory. While one is involved in other prayers, one may compensate for prayers one failed to recite. But if you're not involved with a current prayer, you cannot compensate for a previous prayer. So therefore, only at the time I'm already praying for prayer that I'm, allowed, I'm supposed to say, I can say, okay, the doors are open, I'm connecting to God, now let's make up and add an amida for a missed prayer. 
once that time has passed, I finish prayer, the evening service, the mincha, or the morning service, you cannot just go back and say another prayer, another amida, just to make up for that missed prayer. And that's where we're going to stop. Next week, we'll continue God willing, number six. Thank you very much.